Welcome back to the Hospitality Hacks Pro Show. Listen up, folks. Um, we're starting 2023 off with a bang, 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 bang. I hope your new year is going marvelous, magnificent, uh, that you are manifesting. Y'all saw that alliteration? Y'all like that, huh? <laughs> That you are manifesting the things uh, that you had in mind for this year. Um, and uh, happy Black History Month. Uh, I want to talk about today how to start. If I were to start a food and beverage business today, um, which is not in my plan uh, at this point in my career, I have done it in the past. But if I were to start a food and beverage operation today, what would I focus on? What would be the first few steps? Now, um, as a restaurant consultant, I am striving to work with full service restaurants who are independently owned that are already in operation. Uh, so we have something to work with, some history to show and build upon, right, and fine-tuning their front-of-the-house service. However, when I'm out and about networking, talking to people in the industry or who are looking to get into the industry, the number one question that comes up the most is, how do I start? How do I start? What do I do if I have an idea? Maybe it's a menu idea. Uh, maybe I have an idea for a location. Uh, you know, wh where do I even begin uh, to get my, my feet wet in a, uh, establishing a food and beverage operation. So I'm going to share what I would think through, uh, the first few things I would think through if I were to start an operation today, right now in 2023 as a business venture. Okay. So, uh, first thing I say before doing anything, establish yourself as, um, a business, go ahead and get it. LLC and, bank account that is just for business, uh, uh, checking at the very least, if not checking and saving and get those things, boom, 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 knocked off the list so that you are now an official legal entity. Um, I also would say if you have the funds available, go ahead and begin the trademark process for um, your business name. And if you don't want to get a website right away or don't know if you need one, at the very least, I would reserve your business name URL Go ahead and pay GoDaddy or whoever um, to reserve your business name URL. So in case you want to use it, you have. Okay, so those are the first, that's the first little clump. Of, and I'm not going to deep dive into how to start an LLC or EIN. There's so much information. Just go on YouTube. You can YouTube that or Google that and it'll it'll pop right up how to do that. All right. Um, super simple. You can pay somebody to do it for you or you can uh, pay with your time to learn how to do it and do it yourself. Okay, so that's first things first is legitimize yourself. Now, no knock to the weekend warriors who are, you know, um, slinging plates um, out of their home or out of their trunk. Hey, do what you got to do. Hats off, you know, um, but if you want to expand a uh, past, maybe just doing it once or twice a week and turn into an actual business, I definitely would recommend legitimizing yourself and also um, getting insurance. Uh, just in case someone gets sick or tries to accuse you of something, legitimate or not, um, you have that extra layer and for your business, okay? So that's first thing first. Then I would think to the who, what, when, where, why, and how of the business. The who, what, when, where, why, and how. I've heard those questions grouped together often, right? But when we think about the who, a couple of who's we're going to think about. The first who is who is your target market or avatar or person that you want to sell to? Who is that person? Okay. Don't say everybody, <laughs> right? Uh, everybody is too broad. We can't target everybody. Okay. So if it's vegans, cool. If it's high school students, cool. If it's college students, great. If it's a certain um, community of people in a certain part, a certain region, cool. Right. But who is your target? All right. Um, the other part of the who I would think through is who is your competition? OK, so once you narrow down who you want to serve to, the next thought is, well, who is competition in this space who is serving maybe a similar product or also serving the same sector of people? OK, so that's definitely something I would think through. I would journal through. I would type notes and I would keep these notes even at the end to start to compile some sort of business plan. OK, uh, the what? What am I going to serve? Is it hot dogs? Is it nachos? Um, is it some fine dining concept? Right. Uh, is it something quick, easy execution where it's in and out more of a fast food or 
casual style, right? Or do I want people to come and take an hour, hour and a half, two hours, uh, three hours to enjoy multiple courses, maybe wine pairings and a whole experience? What what are we doing, right? Because the approach is completely different depending on, you know, you know the who, <laughs> right? And the what, all right? The approach is completely different. Price point, also different. Uh, and you just have to, you know, it all works together like a well-oiled machine. It all works together like a well-oiled machine. So figure out each nuance and how they work together. Um, so we're talking about if you just joined in, what's going on? Talking about if you want to start a food and beverage business in 2023, what are the first few things um, that you should think through in order to start to get your feet wet, all right? We talked about the who, the two parts of the who. Talked about the what. Uh, let's talk when. All right, the wind has multiple components as well. Okay, wind is not just the time of day. You know, if I'm doing breakfast, okay, maybe 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. If I'm doing brunch, brunch only on the weekends, right? That's a that's a component of the wind is the time of day, but also the season. Seasonality plays a big role in food, right? Everything is not necessarily. I don't want to say everything is not always available because you can kind of get your hands on just about anything, but is it in its peak? right? Is it in its prime? Let's think seasonality. Certain types of food, I only eat certain times of year. And it, even if I see it somewhere in a market, in a store, in a restaurant, I'm like, eh, I'll wait, right? I, I, I want those foods at their peak. So are you going to have a menu that changes with the season? Is it something that's always const, a constant, constantly available, right? Also in the thought process of seasonality is, let's say, for instance, you have a food truck or a mobile unit, are you going to work just in the spring and summer and take the fall and the winter off, right? And, and are you hitting festivals and things of that nature? Or, you know, are you just going to power through the entire year, but maybe have a slightly different plan for the colder month? Okay. I don't know about you. I'm from California. I like to be warm. <laughs> I could I, be an outside wind blowing rain. Like, mm -mm. I, I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, so that wouldn't be part of my uh, plan is to be outside on a mobile unit in the middle of winter. However, you might say, hey, listen, I'm going to capitalize on the fact that, you know, most food trucks or mobile units are, are going to stay home. Maybe I'll have hot chocolate component. Maybe I'll sell some hand warmers on the truck, free hand warmers in every um, food bag. Hey, listen, there's ways, there's ways to attack it. We just have to think through it, right? So the who, the what, the when, um, the where, the where is important. So I kind of just started talking about mobile units, okay? Do you want a mobile unit? Do you want a brick and mortar, meaning a traditional uh, restaurant that someone would have to physically walk into, right? Um, do you want to cook from your home? Maybe you're in a county that allows you to sell baked goods, canned goods, things of that nature from home. Uh, and that is a, a plausible option, right? Or do you want to use something like a shared kitchen or an incubator um, to pay someone to use their commercial kitchen space in order to have a legitimate place where the health inspector can come in, look around and say, yes, you are safely handling and serving food, right? Um, so you gotta think through that. Or maybe it's a combination. Maybe you wanna start off in one vein and then graduate later on down the road. Um, there's lots of options there. There's also test kitchens, um, that need people to use their equipment and, and things of that nature, help show off their equipment. There's, um, you can go to an independent restaurant and say, hey, listen, I see that you're serving breakfast from eight to two. I'd like to do a dinner pop-up once a week, right? From four to eight, can we work something out so that I'm able to use your, your dining area and your kitchen space in order to do these pop-ups? Okay, so a pop-up also could be part of the uh, you know, your strategy to start to get your name out there and people to know who you are, know what your food tastes like and have the word spread. Some people only do pop-ups. Some people, some instances, um, they don't aspire to have a uh, brick and mortar or any other type of like standard set day-to-day -day operations, but they want to do a pop-up once a quarter. They want to do a pop-up once a month. And, and that's it. And that's totally a way to attack this business as well. If it's something you enjoy doing, but you don't want the daily, every single day grind of food service, 
um, that is something that is available to you, right? So he talks about the who, what, when, where, why. Why do you want to get into this industry? Listen, it's not all glitz <laughs> and glamour, okay? It's hard work. So when people ask me, they ask me all the time about catering and stuff like that. If it doesn't have anything to do with the kids or the program, um, uh, it, <laughs> hard pressed, hard pressed to see me saying, yep, oh yeah, I'll, I'll do a private catering event. It's a lot of work and I'm not adverse to hard work. Um, it's just going to take a certain price point to get me to move. Uh, if it has nothing to do with, with the goals that I have set right now. Right. Um, so if it's not linked to the program guys, sorry. Um, not to say that I never, you know, never will do a private event or anything like that. Um, I just had one of my old clients call me for specialty baked item. It was her birthday. Okay. You know, but listen, why? <laughs> why are you doing what you're doing? Is it for the love of cooking? Um, is it because you just always heard that having your own business and working for yourself is the way to go? And um, you figure, why not try this? Like everybody else you see having success in food and beverage. So why not try it? Uh, is it something deeper? Uh, it really, to me, has to be more than the money in my personal opinion, if it's just about the money, there's some other easier, quote unquote, less physically intense ways to make money than to work in food and beverage uh, industry. I'm just, I'm just being honest. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Uh, that day-to-day -day grind of the restaurant is something that I, I'm not going to lie. I miss it sometimes. Um, I do miss it sometimes, but it definitely takes a certain type of individual, okay? Um, if you're not sure if you're that individual, I tell people all the time, go work in a restaurant. If you feel like you want to have a food truck, go work on somebody's food truck for a couple months. There's plenty of people out here who need help. You'll find somebody. Go do it. And then, and then make this jump. Um, because to me, the why has to be more than, oh, it's a good way to make money. Like the money is good, but there has to be some other underlying reason when you, it's, you know, late, you've been serving all day and now, oh, now there's a pile of dishes over here. <laughs> who's going to scrub the floor? Like who's going to, it's not just the cooking and the serving, it's the cleaning. It's the resetting. It's the prepping. It's the hiring and the firing. It's the people not showing up. You're the owner, mind you. If people don't show up, the buck stops with you. Like, you have to figure out how to fill in the gaps. You have to figure out how to reel in the slack, right? And so it's not just, oh, I have an idea for something I would like to serve. Mm, I know who I want to serve it to. Leo, let's get out here and get some of this funny. It's so many other components as well, okay? Um, where are you kicking at, right? Um, who's going to help you? Doing it by yourself. If you need to start off by yourself, start off by yourself. Eventually, you want to be in the position where you need help, right? But you want to get that help before you need it. Get that person trained up to be able to meet your standard, right? Even if they've worked in another food and beverage operation before, it doesn't mean that they know what you need for them to do. So you have to give people a chance to acclimate to what you need, right? So the why is important. You can go real deep and meditative with the why, right? Um, but you need to know why. Like, you need to think about it. Why this? Why this? It could be, there's so many things you can do. So why this? Okay. Um, how? Okay, we kind of kind of already in the how, I think. But, yeah, is it brick and mortar? Is it a mobile unit? Is it a pop-up shop? Is it, you know, how are you going to serve your food and, and or beverage? How are you going to get it? Is it a cart? Right. What? How are you going to get it to the people? Are you going to do delivery only? Is it going to be pickup only? Is it going to be full service? Is it going to be counter service? All right. Is it going to be people come up, order at the counter? You they pay. Um, maybe you give them a number and someone brings their food out or do you call them back up to the counter to come get their food? You want to think through um, some of these things. Right. And again, taking notes as you go along. Um, I, my first couple of business ventures, no business plan in sight. 
it was no plan in sight. There was not even a sketch of a plan. It was just like, yo, what we doing? We out here catering, cool. Who who need it? Who need this work? Oh, it's a wedding. Yep, got it. Oh, birthday party, sure. What who what is it? Housewarming? K. Like we were taking everything, doing everything all over the place, you know. So and it's better to start that way to, than to not start at all, in my opinion. It's better to start and have some activity and do some action than to sit on your hands and wait till you feel like everything is perfect because everything will never be perfect. So start before you're ready. Start before you're ready. So if you have an idea, I, I don't want you to be frozen in fear. And I don't want you to say, oh, well, Tasha told me I needed the who, the what, the when, the where, the why, the how before I could do anything. So I'm just not going to do anything because I don't know. Right. Maybe I know the who, but not the what. Or maybe I have the what and I know the how, but I don't know the when, the where. Right. So if you have some of the components, right, start where you are. Do 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 something every day to get you to the next level. Right. Um, figure out a different portion every day, but start, start. So if you know, boom, step one, let me legitimize my business. Let me get a let me get a um an address. Let me get a LLC. Let me get a name. Let me reserve my domain name. Let me, you know, th those are activities that are getting you a little bit closer, right? Um, let me figure out, okay, let's think about this menu. What kind of food do I want to put out here, right? And who do I want to serve it to? How do I want to serve it to them, right? And so if you don't have every single I dotted and T crossed, don't let that stop you. Um, but work towards having those components in mind. Even if you don't have a full out, full fledged business plan written out, typed out, whatever, at least think through these components, right? If you're not thinking about, for instance, who and the who piece, who your competitor is, right? And you roll up, you got hot dogs, you roll up to um, to serve at a football game and there's three other people with hot dog carts. You should know every hot dog cart in the city. Like you should be aware of everybody in your city who is serving a similar type of food as you. Do some research, right? You shouldn't be surprised when you roll over, who is this? You should know. You should know who they are, right? And you should know how you're similar and how you're different. You should eat their food, right? And you should make sure people. Now, competition or not, they should also know who you are. Keep in mind too that just because someone is a competitor in the space or in your area doesn't mean you have to be a rival in the sense of I hate your guts. You also you sell hot dogs and I sell hot dogs. Oh my God. Like when I see you coming, I'm walking the other way. No, no, be strategic, be smart, um, be cordial, right? And I would develop a relationship with those other three cards. You never know, they may get some business they can't handle, they can kick it to you. Right. But if you are grimy and saucy and looking down your nose and feeling threatened. That won't happen. It's not going to happen. Right. So and then the same for you. Get their contact information. Hey, look, um, you know, I may have some caterings coming up or requests for appearances that I can't handle. And if you know, if I can, is it OK if I if I refer people to you? Right. Come on, y'all. Let's think ahead. Let's think ahead in 2023. Um, if you have any questions about anything mentioned in this video, please drop a comment below. Um, this is in no way an all-encompassing starter guide, uh, but I think this gives enough to think through, right? I think this gives enough to think through if you're like, hmm, everybody always told me my macaroni and cheese is excellent. It's the best macaroni and cheese they've ever had. I've been thinking about starting a, a restaurant that only serves macaroni and cheese. And then I could top it with different things. I could have one with shrimp, one with I could have some specialty sauces. I could have macaroni and cheese with cut chicken tenders and a buffalo sauce with a little crumb, a little crumble on top. Yeah, I can see it, right? So you have the idea, right? You got you have the food, right? But if you if you have that idea, but you haven't thought through, well, any of the other components, like you just know everybody told you you can kick. Everybody told you you had the ma best macaroni and cheese, but you haven't thought through, well, who do I want to serve that to? Who eats macaroni and cheese? Who would want to buy a gourmet bowl of macaroni and cheese? 
right? Uh, you haven't thought through the through the where will I sell it? Well, do I want? Do I really want to have to go unlock doors every day or pay somebody to unlock restaurant doors every day? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Maybe you haven't thought about it, right? Or do I want to just outsource this to somebody else, right? I know I make great macaroni and cheese and I have a friend who's also a chef who's been catering and things of that nature. Maybe I can just collaborate with this person and do a pop-up once a month to test the waters and see maybe it's the mac and cheese pop-up, right? Maybe you go to some festivals where, where they focus on those type of foods to check out well, what are other people doing, right? So guys, listen. Again, these are just a few things I would think through if I were starting um, a new food and beverage business operation right now in 2023. I would also be thinking through how you accept payments, okay? Um, I would be thinking through, do I want to have a standard POS, point of sale system? where I come up and people can swipe or tap their card? Do I want to take uh, Apple Pay, Google Pay? Uh, do I want to be able to, to accept digital money, right? Do I want to, like, think through all of those? Maybe that's something you graduate to later. Is it cash only? Some people still operating on cash only. I feel like that's a mistake. But is it cash only? Right? Or do I not accept cash at all? think through those things, right? It's a lot of things to think through, but the, if I had to say quick starter guide, a quick starter guide, name, everything around that name to start to protect the entity. Go ahead and reserve your Instagram handle, TikTok handle, you know, whatever, YouTube, whatever social media uh, sites you want to use, URL, Right, those are all things to protect that name, trademark, all those things, right? Um, the name, the food, the people, the brand, the food, the people, the brand, the food, the people. So how do I start to build the brand, right? What do I do to test the recipes to know that it's gonna work? And who am I serving to and who's gonna help me serve it? People is such an important piece. So those are the three things we will focus on, the brand, the food, the people, uh, the who, what, when, where, why, how, and get somebody on your team who can help you see the things you cannot see, right? Get somebody on your team who, um, even if they're not there every day, you can ask a question, right? You can bounce ideas off of who's going to support the vision, not speak negativity into you, your vision, the business, but lift you up, right? And that may not be the person that you think it is. It may not be your spouse. It may not be your sibling. It may not be your parent. It may not be your child, right? Or it may, right? But you need to start building that team of people around you who are going to lift you up because it's going to get hard. It's not going to be easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it, okay? You're going to have bumps in the road. You're going to make mistakes. Um, but start out with a solid foundation, get you a team around you and keep forging ahead every day. Do something to get you closer to the end result. Begin with the end in mind. It's the last thing I'll say. Begin with the end in mind. Where do I want this thing to end up? Do I want to have a 10 restaurant fr franchise? Do I want to just try this catering thing for a little while? Um, just to pay off some debt. Maybe I'll give it three years. Um, do I want to, where, where do you want it to end? Do you want to end up teaching like me? Do you want to end up um, consulting? Do you want to end, where do you want the thing to end, right? So begin with the end in mind so you can see what steps you need to take to get to that end result, all right? If you need help, if you have questions, feel free, hit me up. Um, you can always email me info at hospitalityhackspro.com. You can leave a comment down below, uh, leave a question down below. Look forward to hearing from you. Hopefully this helps somebody. All right. Hopefully I wasn't too much all over the place in sharing these thoughts. Um, it's kind of a, uh, I try to, to, to have the focal point be the who, what, when, where, why, how, because those, if you start thinking through those pieces, um, you will cover so many things.
that need to be covered if you're starting your brand new operation, all right? And even some of us who have op existing operations need to think through the who, what, when, where, why, how of getting to the next level, right? And we can save that for a different conversation, but to kick it up to the next level, we might need to go back and revisit some of these things. Where are we at? What are we doing? Are we average? Are we above average? Let's go.